Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In this session, let's continue our discussion on India-Bhutan relations. So we know that India and Bhutan, it, ha it is a traditionally unique bilateral relations that is characterized by the trust and understanding and it, have a matured, and it has matured over the years. And this basic framework of India-Bhutan bilateral relation, it is the Treaty of Friendship. So both has a treaty of friendship and cooperation it was signed in the in 1949 between india and nepal so until 2007 india exercised significant leverage over bhutan's foreign policy due to this treaty and when bhutan transitioned from an absolute monarchy to constitute democracy in the year 2008 the friendship treaty was renegotiated to give a greater autonomy to Bhutan in its foreign policy and its military purchases. But Indian investment, technical support and the Indian Bhutan free trade agreement, it means that India continues to play a key role in supporting Bhutan's infrastructure, development and economy. So and uh, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he visited uh, Bhutan in the year 2014 we know Bhutan is our smallest neighbor and the, and this move it made it apparent that India's acknowledge India acknowledges that it solids and uh, it has a special friendship with Bhutan and one reason was strategic with the landlocked Himalayan country lying on the borders with China and just south of the Tibet so the other thing was that a large hydropower potential of Bhutan which has been seen in India as a source of cheap electricity. So after this in the last session we have discussed about the main bilateral issues like a hydroelectric corporation between India and Nepal and the three hydroelectric projects like uh, Chukka, Kuruchu and Tala hydroelectric projects. Next, we have also discussed about the uh, trade issues between India and Bhutan, about the double taxation avoidance agreement, uh, which was signed in March 2013 between both the governments of India and Bhutan. And we also have discussed about the BBIN agreement, that is Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Nepal's motor vehicle agreement. So in this session, uh, we'll discuss about the China's factor in Bhutan and also the Bhutan's border dispute with China and the fallout of Doklam episode on India-Bhutan ties and what where the lessons for India from all these issues, we'll also discuss about it. So now let's discuss about the China factor. So India, we know that India holds an important strategic position in China-Bhutan relations. In China-Bhutan relations and there is no guarantee that this position is permanent. And Bhutan's position as a small landlocked country which is situated between two major Asian chains and it creates an imperative to maintain peaceful ties with both India and China. The 24th round of China-Bhutan border talks which is held in Beijing which is held in Beijing in August 2016 it brought several aspects of South Asian geopolitics geopolitics into focus and China's increasingly causy relation with Pakistan are more recently Nepal and it have concerned India for many years. The country now appears to be expanding its present in the Himalayas through negotiation with another of India's neighbors that is Bhutan and earlier in the year 2012 China and Bhutan indicated for the first time the possibility of establishing full diplomatic ties following a meeting between the then Bhutanese Prime Minister Jigme Tindle and then Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao on the sidelines of 
Rio plus 20 conference in Brazil without India's knowledge and this development it was taken very seriously by the Indian government which results in the withdrawal of India's petroleum subsidies to Bhutan on the eve of Bhutan's 2012 general elections and this led to the defeat of this government in the election and India's response was considered by many political strategies as a definitive message to Bhutan and it is to be remembered that Bhutan is also the only country in the region that joined India in its boycott of China's President Xi Jinping's flagship project that is Belt and Road Initiative. Now let's discuss about the Bhutan's border dispute with China. So this China and Bhutan tensions date back to China's occupation of Tibet in the year 1951 which was followed by publication of Chinese maps that claimed considerable territory in central or northwestern Bhutan. So this resulted in closer ties between India and Bhutan along with an embargo on cross-border trade with China. So loosely demarcated through much of history efforts to formally delineate the Bhutan China date back to 1980 when Timpo decided to open border negotiations with Beijing. In the year 1990, Beijing offered Timpo a swap saying it would concede its claims to Pasamlung and Jakarlung valleys in the country's north if Bhutan would hand over the four enclaves along the Chumbi Valley. So these are the points Jakarlung and Pasamlung. So even though Bhutan is believed to have been initially inclined to take the deal, it soon changed course. In the year 1996 November, Timpo's negotiation returned to the table with claims to the western enclaves that were more expansive than those that they had made earlier. And curiously, being, Beijing alleged that India was behind this about turn. So though both countries signed a 1998 agreement which commits them to maintain the status quo, the actual border talks it rapidly got bogged down around Bhutan's new claims in Doklam and it broke down completely from 2006 to 2009. In this years, Beijing ramped up the pressure building at least six roads that is cutting deep into the western enclaves among them and one cutting through the Torsa nature reserve towards the Jompelri Ridge which is the closest point to Bhutan-China-India junction where the Royal Bhutan Army is stationed. So ever since the year 2010, a joint Bhutan-China Technical Commission, it has been engaged in verifying the border on ground. In an effect to develop a shared one is to 100,000 scale maps that would allow the two sides to agree on common landmarks and features to facilitate technical discussions on their claim lines and diplomatic uh, this was said in one diplomatic sources and however there has been little forward movement on the substantial disagreements so from the china's point of view the most critical of this are over the western enclaves they are from the western enclaves which overtook its highway linking to the town of Yutang with Lhasa which is a key logistical route for PLA which is at tactical disadvantage in this sector. So Beijing has also said it plans to build the railways along the route. So though the PLA it had long carried out patrols up to the Zompelri Ridge, which asserting its claims to the territory. This construction of the road, it marked a physical assertion of its case and the violence of the 
1998 agreement committing both sides to respect respect the status quo so we have already discussed about the doklam crisis in our previous session uh, on the chapter when we where we were discussing about the sino india relations so this if you understand that sino india relations and then the topic called fallout of doklam episode on india bhutan ties will be a very easy to understand so in case if you have not watched that video i kindly request you all to watch sino india relations uh, the topic related to doklam crisis and then we'll see this video so now let's discuss about the fallout of doklam episode on india and bhutan ties so while bhutan it has been a strong indian ally and it has stood by new delhi during the standoff the last several weeks of standoff it have emboldened those voices in bhutan which seeks a balanced foreign policy which seeks a balanced foreign policy that is opening of ties with china in all its statements following the disengagement the china have emphasized their sovereignty over the area and the chinese offer of a swap for doklam with disputed areas in the north is bound to be renewed an offer which has always interested thimphu so as china starts courting thimphu and as bhutan starts seeking greater ties with beijing it would be unfair to expect bhutan to choose between india and china so the bhutan statements welcoming the resolution of doklam standoff is a pointer however mild in the direction so in view of some bhutan is experts the indian army was deployed on the soil of another country against a third country without proper treaty mandate or unambiguous official invitation to intervene on behalf of this bhutan is government so uh, in the year 2007 india bhutan india bhutan friendship treaty states that the two countries it shall cooperate closely with each other on the issues that relates to their national interest and that neither the neither government it shall allow the use of its territory for activities that is harmful to the national security and interest of the other and notwithstanding the special security uh, relationship that india and bhutan have shared over the past several decades nothing in 2007 treaty binds india to send troops to help bhutan nor did bhutan explicitly request military assistance from india during the standoff even though the mea statement of june 30 2017 refers to the coordination between the two countries during the standoff so bhutan it had an option of refusing indian security assistance which would have severely complicated matters for india so the argument here is not that india does not have legitimate security and strategic interest in bhutan which would be undermined by the chinese territorial aggression but there is a need to engage in careful scenario building before india decides to take china on militarily side so talks between bhutan and china on the border dispute the root cause of military standoff on the doklam plateau which ended the disengagement of indian army and the people's liberation army troops they are likely to take place as it is scheduled despite diplomats having diffused the weeks the week long crisis even if the bhutan china border talks are cancelled uh, they are bound to resume in the upcoming years so beijing sources said it has not called for this year's round of negotiations and it normally held which was normally held between june and august so in a move that experts in bhutan say it indicates it is reluctant to pub, uh, publicly concede that it claims of sovereignty over the doklam plateau have been disputed for several years and failure to resume negotiation it leaves open the prospect that fresh crisis could erupt over disputed regions along china's chumbi valley along the china's chumbi valley which is a narrow corridor that separates western bhutan from 
India's Sikkim, where the PLA has cut roads towards Royal Bhutan Army outpost in Doklam, Sinchulum, Charitang, and Dramana. So, in view of Bhutanese analysis, India never intervened or even raised its voice in the past about the numerous Chinese incursions into Bhutanese side. So, including the more serious road building activities. So, this is because they did not affect Indian security unlike the Doklam. So, also it was in fact Bhutan's firm and uncompromising stand that the status quo should be maintained as per the 1998 agreement where both in the public's position and behind the scenes that allowed the face saver of a deal for both India as well as China. So in perspective of many in the Bhutanese government, the condition for future crisis it remains in the place despite August disengagement deal. So this crisis, it was never about a road and troops which seeks to use the Doklam road in a war and it, have, it, and it would have been asking to be massacred by Indian positions higher up the ridge and it would have disintegrated each winter anyway. So the reality is that this crisis emerged from India's decision to confront Chinese coercive action on the ground. And many hurdles have been told by PLA patrols to turn back this summer from high altitude grazing grounds they had used for generations and asserting that the pastures belong to China but not Bhutan. So this is a move that may have been designed to put pressure on Bhutan. So from all this what did India learn? So the Indian government it must see that the Bhutan sovereignty is no a trivial matter that a Bhutan security is not a trivial matter and it avoid frivolous comments on it. So the question does matter to Bhutanese people and although their government had put out a gag request to newspapers on the Doklam standoff for now and blog posts and social media write-ups by respected commentators indicate that uh, there was much disquiet over the idea that Indian and Chinese troops may occupy the plateau in a tense statement for months. So it cannot have escaped India's notice that the only statement issued by Bhutan's foreign minister during the Doklam standoff made no mention of a distress call to India, only efforts demarch to China. So New Delhi, it would do well to refrain from differentiating between political factions inside Bhutan unlike what it has done in Nepal, Bangladesh as well as Sri Lanka and it will recognize that there is no anti-India faction and India will recognize that there is no anti-India faction in Bhutan even if some are calling for the establishment of ties with China. So India must also be aware that the other neighbors were watching the Doklam standoff closely and it would be short-sighted not to recognize that Bhutan is at one tri-junction with India and China but Nepal, Myanmar and Pakistan too it have a tri-junction. So with both countries and China's reference to the third country presence in Pakistan occupied Kashmir is uh, which puts a spotlight on all this and one of the biggest learnings from the standoff is for uh, India to reach out much more to the people of Bhutan. So this is all the more important to counter critics who have been attacking India on social media. So uh, for example, uh, let's say the rupee is a legal tender in Bhutan and it is equivalent to Nugal Trump which is a currency of Bhutan and following the uh, demonetization decision, thousands of Bhutanese found themselves stuck with the cash. They couldn't use it. So ordinary Bhutanese argue that India should have at least consulted Bhutan in advance to reduce the pain due to demonetization. So India must calibrate both its message and its military moves in order to keep Bhutan on.